Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare-certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. They're polite. I mean, they just take the time for you. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. I like the Angels for what they've done for me. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always to the producer and editor of our series, Jeff Durall. And we are at the Kansas Wetlands Education Center located on uh, K-156 Highway, just uh, southeast side of the Cheyenne Bottoms Wildlife Area northeast of Great Bend as we visit with an educator from the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism and the Butterfly Festival Coordinator here at the Wetland Center, Pam Martin. Big event coming up on Saturday here at the Center. Pam, tell us about it. Well, it's everything butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, try and give an experience where adults and children have a wonderful time learning about butterflies and also pollinators. Over the years, we've added bees to this because both butterflies and bees are so important to our food source. And so this year, we'll have an exhibit beehive and a beekeeper that's going to come. And we'll also have an insect zoo where adults and children can get up close and personal with walking stick insects and praying mantises and giant cockroaches, <laughs> which some of them don't like, but they're really cool. And uh, then we'll have games for the kids and crafts. And one of the really cool crafts that they're going to make is a sand art butterfly. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's we, amazing. We spent a lot of hours cutting these. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> and then the kids, they really love this because they take a pin and they remove the um, paper and it's sticky and they put the sand down, it's like magic because they're, create, they're creating right there as they go. This and event is this Saturday, right. 9 to noon mm -hmm. here at the Wetland Center right. and it's all free. It's all free, yes. Families, individuals, youngsters about what age would be appropriate, Pam? Oh, we have people that bring strollers ah. because we have a very nice trail mm -hmm. and they can take um, the young, you know, I, I would say you may not want to bring a two-month-old, but, but they take <laughs> one-year-olds, and we've even had pictures of one-year-olds touching the butterflies, uh -huh. which is great. And it's never too early to expose kids to nature and butterflies. Now, the event itself, uh, 9 to noon here at the Wetland Center, is all free. Right. Part of it is going to be monarch tagging, right? Right. Tell us about that. Okay. Let me put that up here. Well, we started... I started monarch tagging back when Monarch Watch began mm -hmm. uh, 24, 25 years ago. And so we've incorporated that into the festival. And what we do is we capture the monarchs and hold them. There we go. And we place a self-adhesive stamp on the, this is called the discal cell, right in the middle of the hind wing. And we put that on there and hold it three seconds and they're tagged and we release them. And we get a lot of questions, well, does it hurt the butterfly? And, and it, that's the center of gravity for the monarch, so they don't fly in circles, and mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't weight them too much on one side. And many are recovered in Mexico, mm -hmm. so they've determined that this does not hinder the butterfly in any way. And um, we also have to gather data for the scientists up at the University of Kansas. And one of the things they want to know, is it a male or a female? So the kids get to determine that by looking for the scent gland on the male's wing, which is right there. And they get a lot of fun out of that, just determining, oh, what, is it a boy or is it a girl? And then we write the date down. And each tag has three letters and three numbers. And that is individual to that butterfly that's tagged. And then it has a website and a number on it where you can call or go online and let them know if you found a tag. Mm -hmm. 
but most of them are recovered in Mexico. So you will actually be doing tagging yes. on monarchs here at the Wetland Center on Saturday. Right, right. And they are migrating through this past weekend. They came through. They um, like to follow cold fronts ah. because if you can imagine, it takes them two months to make this journey. Mm. And they're flying over 2,000 miles. Mm -hmm. From here, it's about 1,250 miles. Mm -hmm. But in southern Canada, it's over 2,000 miles. So they try, they're just like vultures. They glide as mm -hmm. much as they can, and they'll use the fronts to get them 100 miles instead of 20 miles a day. So they're pretty smart about this. <laughs> and the Wetland Center is a nice stopover point for it, the migration. It is. Um, we have a lot of goldenrod, a lot of sunflowers that they can nectar. And then the nice thing is along the trail, we have a shelter belt. Mm -hmm. and they can shelter in there if it's very windy or stormy and then go out from the trees to nectar in the flowers. Mm -hmm. And Sunday and yesterday we had a lot of monarchs doing that. Uh -huh. They're already here. <laughs> uh -huh. So Saturday should be a good day for tagging and for uh, seeing monarchs. There. We hope. Uh -huh. We can't ever predict that <laughs> because you know nature you never know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but hopefully this Cool weather now will hold them, mm -hmm. and there's also a cool front coming through, so I'm hoping that we will get more coming in. Now, the last event was in uh, 2015, last right. year, right. and of 500 that were tagged, mm -hmm. there was actually a recovery of nine that came from the Wetland Center. Right. That was pretty exciting for you, wasn't it? Yes, because in 23 years, I've only had four recovered. <laughs> and that's myself doing it personally and with uh, um, different organizations. And so last year we had five, and what's neat is we had one recovered um, that a preschool had tagged, mm -hmm. and one recovered from the festival, and then the other seven were recovered from the alfalfa fields that uh, we took people out and tagged, and here too. Mm -hmm. We took uh, forays out into the fields and tagged. But before people tag, they have to have the official stickers from Monarch Watch, right? Right, right. And we order those and, and we provide those. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we had a, a drought, well, three years of drought, mm -hmm. and numbers really, really went down. And the numbers of monarchs are really decreasing. Um, when I started this years ago, they covered, what would they say, about 12 hectares mm -hmm. in the roost sites in Mexico. And two years ago, they were down to 1.5, I think it was. Mm -hmm. That's how much they've decreased. So a lot of the emphasis of this festival is also to raise awareness that the monarchs are in trouble, along with our bees, and that we have to help them and uh, help them recover. The pollinators, as right. you have mentioned. Right. And what has been the reason, have they been able to determine the decrease of the monarchs? Habitat would be one. Right, I would habitat's assume. the big one. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of deforestation in Mexico, mm -hmm. but they pretty much have a handle on that. Now the Mexican government and Canada and the United States have worked together to um, reduce that. Right now, the problem they think is the reduction in milkweed in the fields. Mm. Because of the use of um, Roundup Ready corn and soybeans, the fields are so clean. Mm. It used to be we had milkweeds in the cornfields, mm -hmm. and now there aren't. And so there's a huge push nationally to plant milkweed because that's the plant that the caterpillars eat. Those are the ones that are the natural food yes. source for the caterpillars. Yes. And that's all they'll eat. Uh -huh. if, if you put a monarch caterpillar on a dandelion, it will starve to death. Mm. It only eats milkweed. Caterpillars are mm -hmm. um, plant-specific on what, what they'll eat. Now the migration, its peak and when does it occur? Is it a yearly event? Uh... Yes, it is. And I have a map here. I think this will help. And let's see, maybe if we stand up. What happens is in um, the fall, they travel south from southern Canada, the east coast, all the way down through the um, Gulf states, um, Oklahoma, Texas, through Mexico, to a site, um, Transvolcanic Mountains. And that takes, as I said, two months. They get there early November. They stay all winter. 
in the roost sites. And then in February, they change physiologically and they begin breeding and laying eggs and they start the northern trek. So they come back up through Mexico into Texas, the Gulf Coast here. They lay eggs and then they finally die. Mm -hmm. Then they go through a 30-day life cycle and those butterflies continue north. Mm -hmm. They come up into our area, die. 30 um, day life cycle and they keep moving north and what they're doing is they're following the milkweed till they get to southern Canada in about late May or June. Then they continue to have broods. We have three broods of monarchs here, but that last one in August, September, is the one that makes the journey and they live about eight months. And one of those uh, migration routes is right through the mm -hmm. central part of the United States including Nebraska, Oklahoma, and uh... Kansas. Right, and this area is the primary monarch um, population right in here. That's where the corn belt is, and traditionally that's where the biggest um, amount of milkweed is. So that's why we're such an important place mm -hmm. for monarch um, production. And what is it about the wetland center that is conducive to attracting the monarchs, Pam? Well, we have everything they need for habitat. We have Nectar plants, because the adults eat nectar. We have lots of milkweed. We have several species of milkweed that grow here. And we have water, which they also need. So it's, it's just a wonderful area for production. And Quivera um, Wildlife Refuge to the south is also another really good area. And all the CRP fields that we have mm -hmm. also help too. So habitat is one of the main important things yes. in addition to a food source. Right, right, okay. right. And as you mentioned, back to the pollinators just briefly, if we mm -hmm. could, Pam, honeybees as well as the monarchs being pollinators are really important to the millions, even billions of dollars of agriculture, right. which they support basically right. with the pollination which they do for the crops and the plants. Yes. and. Can't emphasize that enough. And it's not just honeybees, it's the wild bees, mm -hmm. like your bumblebees and your little sweat bees and your leaf cutter bees. Mm -hmm. And there's over 4,000 species of bees. And they're in trouble, again, it's, it's a multi-pronged problem. Um, there's a pesticide, neonicotinoids, mm -hmm. that has been shown to be very, very detrimental to bees. Yeah. Um, there's some diseases that they get, some parasites uh, and that all contributes to hive collapse where you just lose the whole hive, they don't come back. Mm -hmm. Then they're finding that bees need variety in their diet, mm -hmm. just like we do. Mm -hmm. And so when they take bees and put them in almond groves and only give them almond flowers, it's really hard on them. Mm -hmm. So we're finding all these things out and hopefully we can turn it around. And finally, back to the monarchs in our last couple of minutes, uh, you mm -hmm. have a couple of other examples yes. here. Uh, monarchs in progress, I guess, right? Yes. <laughs> we raise quite a few here at the Wetlands Center, and we use them for programs. We go out and we do a lot of school programs. Mm -hmm. And so we like to show them each part of the life cycle, which is the egg, the caterpillar, and the chrysalis. And I've got one here that's hanging. Oh, there he goes. He's uh, ready to make his chrysalis. Takes him about 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And they form their chrysalis. And then in about 10 days, the adult emerges. So it's a 30-day process. Mm -hmm. This guy is already eating on the tips of yes. his leaf, isn't <laughs> yeah. he? That's, that's their goal. Mm -hmm. You know, remember the book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Caterpillars. They do. They eat everything. Well, you, milkweed. <laughs> you have a uh, website here at the Wetland Center. Yes. Um, it's wetlandcenter.fhsu. Dot edu. Did I get that right? That's right. <laughs> Wetlandcenter.fhsu.edu. Right. And you can check out the other events and programs that uh, are available on a continuing basis, most of which are free, Pam. Yes, almost everything we um, give are, are free programs. Every now and then we'll have a craft program that there's a nominal fee just mm -hmm. to um, cover the costs. But we have a, a summer series for kids, we have a winter series for kids, we have a craft series, um, things like natural plant dyeing, edible flowers, um, fun things like that, that we work with um, the Cheyenne Bottoms and our native um, garden. 
And in addition to that, uh, in our final moment, if you would, mm -hmm. talk to parents uh, and children mm -hmm. about the importance of families, adults, as well as children connecting with nature. nature. Well, you know, we, we get stuck inside a lot. And um, research has shown that it's very important for kids especially to get out and play. And beside all that research, <laughs> it just, I see it with kids we have here. When they come for a program, they may come in and they'll be, especially sixth graders, oh yeah, I don't want to do this. <laughs> and then we get them out in the water and that all goes away. All the peer pressure goes away. Um, they are, once they catch a fish or a frog or a damselfly nymph, Wow, look what I caught. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just getting kids out there. It's exposing them to the world around them. Mm -hmm. It's important. Um, we also do a lot of um, work with special needs children. Mm -hmm. And what's really amazing is we've had kids that haven't talked in a long time. And they get to feel a fur or even a beehive. And they'll talk or they'll just react to that tactile stimulation mm -hmm. and being outside. So there's definitely a connection with the brain and having a healthy brain and being outside. And it's fun. <laughs> That's the bottom line. That's right. right. That's Pam right. Martin is an educator with the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism and also the Butterfly Festival Coordinator here at the Kansas Wetlands Education Center, northeast on Kansas Highway 156, northeast of Great Bend. The program Saturday, from nine to noon. Pam Martin, our community connection. Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. And the angel care nurse come to see me once a week. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Angel Care has helped to, to stay home. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients.